But first, Nathan Oakley, the man of the hour. So tell us your impressions of the very first day of the first ever Flat Earth Convention in Birmingham, England. It was fantastic, overwhelmingly busy. So I arrived quite late in the day. Um, after my wife got back from work, we just set straight off for there, sat in traffic, got there, and pretty much immediately I was into the thick of it and then on stage with Anthony working out how to get the projector working, which took a couple of minutes, and then we were into it. We were doing it. It was great. Um, you know, Gary did a, a bit of housekeeping at the beginning, um, but he was sort of acting as compare. But he didn't have anyone to introduce him. And as the show organizer, I, I thought, well, you deserve an introduction. So I, I did that for him. So technically, I opened the show. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. I'm not calling it a show, the conference, the convention. Let's get it right. Yeah. Well, everyone will know what you mean. I'm getting conference and convention mixed up all the time when I refer to either one of the events. But it's a convention in the UK, and it is a conference in the US. My hair's in my... I need to get my... I'm getting my bangs trimmed tomorrow. It's kind of out of control. Um, like, got, to yeah. meet like, um, got to meet Robbie, which was uh, delightful. Oh, that's He's, right. You haven't met Robbie. No, no. He was there, um, you know, helping out. Obviously, he's been helping out Gary and giving him a few hints and tips, having organized the American conference or the international conference, I should say. Is that is that the right title? Have I got that right? The international Yes, conference. the American one's international. And I don't know what the difference is, but I guess in reality, they're all international because we come from all over. So, Well, it's definitely um, uh, a fair few countries represented there. I mean, my wife was telling me afterwards that a Dutch reporter was there and she was asking... Oh, she was being asked a few questions by him. Um, so she, she sort of figured out after the fact that he was actually a reporter as he was scribbling all this stuff down, but she sort of caught, he caught her off guard a little bit, I think. Um, interesting that he would catch probably one of the, I think they asked, they did a small straw poll, how many non-flat earthers there, and it was, you know, it was in single figures. So she was one of the very few people there that wasn't a flat earther, or at least on the fence, shall we say. But um, Paula, your wife, knows more about flat earth and the politics behind it and the people behind it than most people who are not really flat earthers. Well, she's got a vague idea about the people because she was walking around going, I don't know their names, but I know who they are. So she's got a sort of a, a facial familiarity with people like Dave Murphy, who, who again, I hadn't met before. So it was really lovely. You know, he walked up to me. And I'm like, wow, it's Dave. And I don't know if he appreciates that, but, you know, he's like a star to me. You know, I yes. genuinely was a bit of a celebrity. So he sort of came up to me, put his arms around me. And I was like, oh, how are you doing, Dave? You all better? Because he's been a little bit under the weather. Yes. Facebook follow you'll probably know exactly what I'm talking about um but you know he was a, a, a bit short of breath and he did um like a, during the Q&A they had a few of the presenters go up so Ira Landucci went up and Dave went up and obviously Anthony and I were up there uh, to begin with um but there was um you know a bit of, bit of Q&A that went on there but it was kind of just a, a show opener again I've got to stop calling it a show it's a show <laughs> I mean it's a presentation put on for people to to watch so in a, in a sense it's a show that doesn't mean it's not factual but yeah oh it absolutely was factual so anthony um without me letting the cat out of the bag because he's going to present this tomorrow um for scrutiny shall we say on the debate show but he had a an exclusive um that was i mean i'm not going to lie it was quite rushed because anthony only caught the footage about a week ago so up until a week ago i, I had no intention of being anything like on stage if you will um that wasn't my intention it was kind of like a last minute thing because anthony had caught something quite specific um that he'd been challenged to do um by our opponents and he'd gone out and done it uh, again without let, without letting too much out of the bag but he presented that exclusively to the um to the conference audience so they all got to see something that was um completely exclusive it went down really really well and uh, yeah Anthony was apologizing to me afterwards saying I'm really sorry I went over because he, he was supposed to take about maybe 15 20 minutes and I think he ended up taking about 40 or 50 minutes to do his full presentation so I, I didn't get to say anything but I was like I, I hadn't presented anything anyway you know I hadn't actually um, sort of rehearsed anything in advance so I didn't care I was like you know my kudos to you. you did an absolutely fantastic job if you're watching Anthony you did a brilliant job um the, it went down really really well um and it was like i say it was exclusive information that nobody had seen before i, I was one of about half a dozen people chris who's on the panel now got to see it as well um and it was you know a very very good piece of information that he presented there so you know if i was a member of that audience 
um, you know, uh, there was a few hecklers, shall we say, <laughs> people who were participating with questions. And they, they got answers from Anthony during his mid-presentation. You know, uh, something came up about um, satellites. And he was like, well, what are satellites? That was it. Someone asked about pictures of satellites. He was like, what pictures? You know, just good on his feet. But yeah, he did an exceptionally good job. And I think anybody who's there will agree that uh, it was very nice to have um, Anthony actually open it up with a full presentation um, on the Isle of Man. So that was great. Uh, it really, 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 really was a good opening by Anthony. So my hat's off to him. And uh, I think judging by just the out the, the turnout, the amount of people that were there, it's going to be a, a, a great convention. People got it right this time. <laughs> just go with show. We know what you mean. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> yeah, great show. Um, and Martin Leakey, he messaged me a little bit earlier and he said he's, I wouldn't say nervous, but he said he's um, excited, uh, incredibly excited. And uh, did you run into Martin today? No, I've been chatting with him on Skype a little bit and uh, he left a comment on that my wife was good enough to film the opening. I didn't ask her to, but she did. So I published that. Um, but yeah, Martin commented on it and said something along the lines of, yeah, it's a far cry from the map of Monday. And, you know, you look back on three years of flat earth and I think of that first meeting at the map of Monday. And for me, looking at a flat earth map seemed very logical and, and a good starting point. And I did all my promotion. I did several video logs about it and an advert. And it was me, Martin and a guy called Steve. That was it. You know, my wife was there as well, but not as a flat earther. She was just along for the ride. So it was a meeting of three. And you go from that and just in that room with all, you know, forget the people dotted around the rest of the convention. Just in that room, there's probably 80 or 90 people in there. And you look around going, wow, this is a, a lot of, a lot of people crammed into one room and they're all there, you know, eagle eyed, listening to everything you've got to say. And uh, like I said, Anthony did an exceptionally good job of not only sort of summarizing some of the things that we've done on the debate show, um, check out Flat Earth Debate if you haven't done so already, Nathan Oakley, 1980. But yeah, along with summarizing some of the stuff he's gone, th gone through on the debate show, he presented something absolutely brand spanking new. And I could imagine being, you know, part of that audience being quite exciting. Well, uh, Martin messaged me and he said he might show up in the live chat. He said he's definitely ready and definitely excited. I want to say hello to DITRH and Zoe of Be Here in Love in the live chat. Zoe, check your Skype. Um, also, Anthony Riley, Sleeping Warriors in the chat, and Jamie Brown, too. So a lot of people are having a nice conversation. And Jimmy, playing hardball, too, mentioned that it's a very relaxing chat, which is good because... A potato party show is just supposed to be pretty chill and relaxing. So one last question. I know you're you're tired, Nathan, although you don't seem tired. You seem pretty hyped up on the energy following the show. Um, what about Dee Dee and what about Gary John? How were they feeling? I mean, this is their baby and they must be over the moon and wiped out and every emotion you could ever imagine. Uh, Dee Dee looked absolutely cool as a cucumber, I'm not going to lie. Totally composed. Gary, you could sense a little bit of stress, of course. He's he's, he's running the event, so he's going to be under a certain amount of pressure, and he was. Um, but everything went off perfectly. You know, I cannot fault what he put on. The event is a success already. So, again, kudos to Gary. I mean, I think he's done a really good job. Um, Robbie said the same, you know, Robbie was there tipping his cap. We were chatting, um, after Anthony and I had finished, um, just outside the, 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 the door of the convention that you saw on the little clip I presented, um, check it out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, there's uh, a little, little hallway where everyone's mustering and, and, you know, drinking a few beverages and, uh, Robbie and I got chatting there and he was saying, you know, this is, this is good. This is a far cry from like Martin and myself were talking about with the map on Monday. You know, it's it suddenly makes people pay a bit more attention to it. You can't just push it into the corner of the internet. I'm I'm paraphrasing what Robbie said here, um, but you know, it's it's suddenly um, not more credible, credible, but more noteworthy as a consequence of um, things like these conferences. So the fact that the media were there and they're paying attention means that it's it's attention worthy. And that's, that's something that three years ago, I don't think any of us could have actually said, you know, you, you've got the optimism to say, yeah, we're growing vastly and growing fast. But when you've got 100, 200, 1,000 people, you know, that's exponential growth. But now it's so much bigger, you know, to actually have enough people to to want to, to buy a ticket to such an event shows the kind of 
the kind of growth that Flat Earth has had over the last three years. And it is now reaching the point, and this is what I said to Robbie, well, this is the point where you can actually see the snowball gathering that momentum. And it's been a couple of years of trying to get that. Anyone who knows, anyone who's trying to build a snowman just coming out of winter, I'm sure there's a few people who have, it's, it's getting that ball rolling, you know, getting the snow to stick initially. And that's what Flat Earth has felt like, certainly for me. Um, yeah, it, it sometimes feels like you're gaining momentum, then it feels like it's going nowhere. Um, but just seeing this makes me feel a lot more confident. That's probably why I don't look tired. I am high on the adrenaline from the conference, I'm not going to lie. Well, I know that the press is being filtered through Didi to make sure that no funny shenanigans happen with, you know, um, clown music being played while video is shot of flat earthers and, you know, the kind of thing that happens because, you know, the media will do what the media will do and there's nothing we can do about it. But she is definitely making sure that everybody there is, they don't have to be pro flat earth if they're covering it at all. In fact, none of them will be for the most part, but um, they just have to take it as seriously in that everyone there is there because they believe what they're talking about and it isn't um it isn't a joke and shouldn't really be treated as if it is a joke so you want me to paraphrase what um my wife told me the dutch reporter was asking her yes please i mean he he was he was grilling her about me obviously um but he was kind of asking also about our daughter and saying well will your daughter become a flat earther and my wife's answer was priceless she said well she can believe whatever she wants to believe and that i is thought a Perfect. great answer. Yeah, he was, what was the other thing that he asked? Um, she turned the questions on him. So she was like, well, what do you think of it all? He said, well, I think it's a bit far-fetched. It's like, oh, okay. And that was just before Anthony did his presentation. So interesting to hear what he says after seeing a bit of actual flat earth evidence presented. Because he may, have, may never have seen any. You just don't know. Yeah, that's true. All of the things that we have put out there when it comes to the uh, the the one in the United States, the conference, there were proofs being shown when there were speeches being done, but in the hallway where a lot of what was recorded and filmed for the mainstream media happened, uh, it was people just selling t-shirts and books and such. And they focused on that way more than the substance that happened within the, uh, the, the conference rooms themselves, which I found sad, but it was easier for them to gather in the hallway. And that's where they decided they would take pictures of anybody who they perceived looked odd or different. Um, but all of us in Flat Earth are odd and different in some way. Even if we don't believe in Flat Earth, that's because every single person on Earth is odd and different. We're not cookie cutter. We're not the same. We don't believe all of the same things or come from the same background. We're all individual and unique people. And anybody could take video of any of us living our life and could paint us as a freak. So I think it's unfair when people say, oh, you know, conferences and conventions paint flat earthers as fools. Um, you know, the people saying that if somebody followed them around with the camera, guess what? <laughs> There'd be clown music playing under while they were washing their dishes in their kitchen sink, so. I'll just drop this in here, just, just to round out my little bit, but um, too many hook words you use there when you're saying about painting and such but math powerland got a shout out from one of the members of the audience while anthony was doing his presentation so he had a, an image of the blue marble i think it was the two, 2007 sort of rehash blue marble picture that he had up on screen and he was saying you know this isn't this isn't something that i can see and someone in the audience was literally shouting out that's a math powerland point and he's like exactly you know is it a photo or is it a painting so but it, it was nice to hear things like maths proof resonating throughout the audience during a presentation that was presenting flat earth evidence. And as soon as the glow came up, in fact, I made a bit of a cock up. I'll, I will show up. I'm sorry. I'm going on. No, no, bit. no. I made a cock up free. with a presentation with the, with the buttons on the PowerPoint and it went to two slides on to a, an image of the globe and the whole audience booed. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So this glow comes up, and because it, it was an error, it was part of the presentation. Um, but because it had just come up at a random point, suddenly there's a, <laughs> a blue marble picture on the projector, and it's like, <laughs> I love it. That's great. That should be a part of every conference and convention, I think, kind of a standard practice sort of thing. Well, thank you for your information, Nathan. Definitely.